Alright, it's finally time. This is the last of my Next Fest 2024 February showcase. One more episode of my favorite and interesting demos from the event. So let's end this with a bang. We are starting things off with the hidden art of innkeeping. In 2023, one of my favorite games was the RPG Maker Shop Sim Extravaganza of Final Profit. And the Hidden Art of Inkeeping looks to be a game similar in that kind of shop sim aspect. But instead of running an item shop, we are running a nice little inn. It's up to us to stick it to that greedy big inn at a vacation area and we decided to open up our own place. Can we become the best dang innkeeper in the land? Will we keep our clients happy? Can we funnel you with all those bugs and insects around? Who knows? But this is a game much like with Final Profit that you're not going to be getting into RPG battles and fighting demons or monsters. It's up to you to organize your inn in terms of who's staying where, the amenities in each room, and how much you're spending each night to keep it all running. As you go throughout the days, more people will join or will stay at your inn. They can provide you with additional side quests and features. You're also free to explore the area, looking for additional amenities, guests, and solve some quests around. I enjoy this one. This is definitely not going to be on the super extremely difficult side, but it is charming nonetheless. So if you're looking for an RPG where you're going to be taking care of people rather than trying to take care of monsters, then you should at least give this demo a check. But since I know a few of you do want to deal with monsters, then this next demo may be for you with Artifact Seeker. This is a roguelike with kind of a bullet heaven vibe to it. It reminds me a little bit of Rogue Genessa, but this one is in 3D. Like that one, You'll choose from various areas to explore on the map on your lovely little node uh, interaction. Each area will have enemies, events, and more for you to deal with. Deal with them any way possible and you'll be able to choose from additional rewards in all matter of items, artifacts, and passives, as well as new skills. And similar to that of other Bullet Heaven style games, your skills can synergize either with each other or with the items you pick up, giving you additional features and functionality and all that. This one looks like it's going to be a fairly robust take on the kind of more rogue-like Bullet Heaven formula. So if you enjoyed something like Rogue Janessa and looking for a kind of bigger, more explosive take on it, I would give this one a check. If you are still, again, tired of bullet heavens and all that, I don't know if the roguelike elements are going to be enough to kind of win you over here, but there is certainly a lot more here than just standing around and letting things go boom every which way. So if you're looking for another take, I would at least give this demo a check, and if you haven't played Rogue Janessa yet, and that's G-E-N-S-I-A, I believe, then you should also check that one out as well. We now turn to Balatrio? I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that name. But this is a poker deck building roguelike. And while you may be seeing poker cards and poker hands on the screen right now, this game also lets you use, well, very different cards for added effects. I guess it would be like if you could play poker but also use dual monsters to help you along the way. There's not much of a story to this one. Your mission is to clear various blinds by earning enough chips during the round. Chips are earned by playing various poker combinations. But where things get very interesting is that you can level up the different hands. You can also level up or change your cards, allowing you to do stuff like maybe get six kings in a row, or get access to joker cards that can change or alter the varying properties of your cards or your hands. As you go through, you'll have to deal with boss blinds, which will throw additional rules and modifiers at you, all the while you're growing your poker deck of hands and cards and all that. It is a very interesting take on the deck builder. This is definitely, I would say, more poker first, deck builder roguelike second. 
if that makes any sense. If you don't know when to hold them or know when to rogue them, you're going to be in trouble here. I don't know what will be in kind of the main game, but there will be any forms of persistence, unlocks, additional challenges, things like that. The demo was just all focused on dealing with the various blinds. Now with that said, you have a whole lot of RNG that can mess you up during the course of a play. You not only have to hold cards and try to get specific hands, but hopefully get the cards that you need. As the game goes on, the amount of chips required to win gets exponentially higher, and you must be able to do stuff like getting full houses or at least a flush if you want to stand a chance, especially when things get really crazy there. But still, a very original take on roguelike design and on deck building as well. So if you like a little bit of poker with your roguelike or a little roguelike with your poker, then definitely check this one out. And now we turn to a game that's a lot more action and violent than our last one with Tarnished Blood. This is a game that combines a lot of elements and something that is very original. What if we take the kind of boss rush focus and hunting of Monster Hunter, timeline turn-based combat, and a progression and brutality system of, say, Darkest Dungeon? Here, we are trapped underground where all kinds of dangerous and strange monsters threaten to kill us. Here, we are trapped underground with a bunch of dangerous monsters that threaten to kill us, and we must protect our tribe by going out there and killing them first, harvesting them for resources, and try not to end up with any dead tribe members. So the combat here is definitely the star and major focus. How this works is you have one unified timeline for your entire party. You can set up movement, attack, or special commands anywhere on the timeline itself, and the timeline for a character will adjust dynamically based on whether they will be hit out of the command, what will happen after the attack is done, etc, etc. Once you've locked in a command, the timeline kind of locks a part of it off. So this is not a case where you can just keep messing things around and there's no penalty. So I don't know if that will be in the finished game or not, but that can be very punishing if you're not used to what's going on. Your mission is to use your characters to get around and strike the monster at its various parts. When a part runs out of health, you will deal kind of overall heart damage to that enemy. Do enough heart damage and the boss is dead, you get the parts, everyone goes home and you can then level them up, craft new gear and so on. Each weapon is kind of a class onto itself, again much like in Monster Hunter. For instance, bow and arrow, they can only attack while they're in the air and if you attack at specific points in the air, they'll gain additional crit damage while a kind of heavy like hammer person can do like a little like spin to win attack in the air that can also counter projectiles. So a lot of the combat is going to be built on you building a party around different weapons and using them to deal with the enemies any which way you can. Bosses are built I believe on having fixed patterns, but you need to again manage what they do and what your party can do to have any chance at victory. This is definitely going to be on the harder side. The game is definitely aiming for like kind of like the brutality and anything can go wrong that can permanently scar your characters for lifestyle of Darkest Dungeon. So this is a game that is certainly meant for expert players. I don't know if there will be any difficulty settings or modifiers like that in the main one, but this is a very original game and certainly one that I want to check out more of. So if you like what you're hearing with this one and don't mind a little bit of complexity and difficulty, then definitely check out the demo for it. And now we go to a game that is far more delightful in its aesthetics, but features a lot more murder, surprisingly, with Kill a Million Rats. In a world where rats have taken over, you play as a guardian spirit for one of the remaining human colonies, and you must cultivate this settlement upgrade buildings, get new followers, and try to keep your village alive from invading evil rats. 
While the store page kind of promotes this as being like a bullet heaven like, it actually feels more like a, almost like a basic turn based, like a city builder civilization style game, but with the bullet heaven style combat as kind of the back half of it. So how this works is that you are going to decide what to build in your village and where. Every building will consume or produce resources. As you level up or gain enough research, you can add a new card or structure or power to your city. This can be more farms for food, being able to cut down more trees for lumber, defensive buildings to protect your village, and so on. Now, when you're looking at the footage here, as I'm moving around in real time, it is still a turn-based game. You will not have any kind of count against you until you commit or build a structure. After enough days have passed, the rats will invade, and they'll invade from randomly kind of chosen positions around where your base is. This is where kind of like the bullet heaven style combat comes in, as your character will attack automatically, as well as any villagers, defensive buildings, and so on that have been set up. So how you build your village will affect where you need to defend, what are going to be the hard points, soft points, weak points, and all that. Survive the waves, and you'll move on to the next season where things will change and you'll need to build additional structures, farms, woods, and all that, and you're trying to survive until winter time. This one is certainly doing a lot, and I was enjoying it from our time spent with it. It can be a little bit hard to start to know kind of where your limitations or what's kind of holding back your village. You need to be able to keep producing or having villagers because they act as your first line defense and they're also a requirement to upgrade your village which will unlock better buildings and that. But if you run out of food then you're obviously in trouble. So this one, it doesn't quite play like a city builder and it doesn't quite play like a bullet heaven like. But if, why, again, like our last game, if what I've been describing sounds interesting to you, then this is certainly a recommendation to try this one out. And we now have more adorable murder, which seems to be a theme now here, with Throne of Bone. This is Deck Building Meets Auto Battler. We play as a necromancer who's trying to take revenge on all those nasty humans and heroes that have been trying to stop us. And we must assemble a deck of minions, monsters, demons, beasts, and more in order to take them apart. The game itself goes with the auto battler style in that whatever four cards or you'll gain more as you go across a run that you put down, they will attack on their own. Each card will have different special abilities or procs based on its own effects or the other cards on the board. Some cards may gain more power as a support card, maybe one will have a reflect damage, and so on and so forth. The cards also belong to various kind of species or classes, which this will affect certain bonus strategies or passives that may relate to, let's say, all skeletons, all zombies, and so on and so on. I like the kind of combination or style of cards in this one. There's a lot of variety and a lot of potential ways of breaking the game, depending upon what you specialize in. As you do better, get more cards, your character will level up. The higher level they go, this will unlock higher quality cards slash minions you can then pick up at the store to then gain more benefits. You can also combine similar copies or the same copy of a monster to get a more evolved version that can also get a special buff of your choosing. So this is going to be one of those games, much like a lot of the other auto battlers, in that you're going to probably win until you lose. And you're going to, have to try and figure out how to make your combination of monsters and so on work based on what passives you get, what shows up in the shop, etc. So I enjoyed this one, and it's one of the few kind of auto-battler style games that I really did end up enjoying thanks to the variety and depth of the cards and abilities. So if you do enjoy auto-battlers and looking for a later side of killing pesky humans, then definitely check this one out. 
and at long last we've reached the final game and I am pretty sure this does not involve anything to do with murder. This is No PTR. This is a kind of action puzzle game where you are hacking corporations looking for the truth and information. In this one, your kind of job is that you'll choose where to hack on the server, which will open up a path to various nodes. The further away from where you kind of infiltrate in the server's location will affect the download speed. As the game begins, it starts out very simple in terms of what you're trying to do. So simple, it may be easy to think that it's just some very casual game. But as you start learning more about what's going on, you soon learn that there is a lot more complicated to this. So one of the things they introduce is a time limit that you can only remain kind of inside a server for 20 seconds. If you're still in there past the 20 seconds, you will lose. Then there are defensive programs. If they touch you or your hacking trail, they will kind of eat up more of your time. And again, you hit zero while you're in there, you lose. There is also kind of like the best writing or best run, which involves you not getting hit by anything to unlock more lore and features. So there's definitely layers into this one. You may not realize if you only play the demo for like five to six minutes. And I was enjoying this one. I'm curious to see how far things will go in the main game in terms of adding in more features, more elements, etc, etc. So this is certainly one that, if you're looking for a very different kind of action puzzle game, I would recommend checking this one out. And again, just a very solid example of doing something very different when it comes to action puzzle design. So with that, we are at long last done. This uh, bizarre adventure has finally ended until the next next fest at some point. Let me know what you think about all the demos down below. What were some of your favorites from the events? Which amazing ones did I end up missing at, through all my coverage? And again, if you are a developer or want me to take a look at your game for a future stream, video, whatever, please reach out. And with that, I am going to go to sleep and never play another video game ever again. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for detailed discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where you some of the art and science of games.